Hello guys, glad to have you on board again today. Sorry about the delay, I kind of forgot about recording this earlier today, but nevertheless, we're gonna do it now. Okay, though, uh, first thing first, uh, we're gonna quick look uh, at the overall structure of our flow, and there are a few things that I'd like to mention. Uh, uh, and also, I would argue on the reasons that have led me to start taking some profits off the table on some of my S&P 500 trades. Uh, I'll explain everything. For full transparency, once again, you've got a full track record of those podcasts. I do record them each and every week. Uh, I don't remember one being missed. And I don't delete any of them, okay? So you have a full track record for a month now. I think I began recording these things back in the uh, late 2022. And you've got the full history of all those flows traded uh, uh, I don't remember when we started, but I, I, maybe we just started back then. I don't know. Anyway, so the first flow is never to be traded. It generally, remember, comes out of a low risk area. Let me just gather the stuff. Okay, so we get to touch the low risk area. This is where we've highlighted our low risk strategy. Remember, that was the bottom of a potential weekly pullback on the S&P 500's case. So we wait for a positive reaction out of this area. It has to go at least up. Uh, to the context, oh, sorry, we're, we're in a H1 time frame reference. Okay, so it has to go reversing the context and pulling the context above the rising moving average. You know the drill, that's the thing, okay? So the, the full pattern has been doing its job, okay? So the first one, we need to see the context outside of the average. That's what we wanted. That's the sign that the first positive reaction has occurred. Then you get to buy around the moving average. I remember buying back then. You get to take a nice profit and then you let the market digest for a third range boundary, which happened in here, if we don't account for this uh, uh, outside regular hours type of shadow candle, and then you buy at the Bollinger Band. I remember myself buying in here and being held on the water for several weeks at the late 2022, uh, as I was questioning whether or not this will work, and it worked. Remember, you put your stop loss below the previous low point. That's always the case. So this was kind of, yeah, hot water area, but still, prices went up. I remember myself buying again in here and taking some profits out there and there. So once again, I remember navigating this very efficiently. I remember navigating this very efficiently with all the track records to prove it. Remember, you have track of everything said back then. You can just scroll back in time and have a look at it. This was the delayed third range boundary and you had an opportunity to take your profits afterwards anyway in here. Then remember, once you've got a three set of flow sequence, you let the market go down for two consecutive flows, which means you want to see uh, um, uh, two times the market's uh, uh, um, moving average uh, uh, falling above, uh, you want to see the context falling below the moving average two times in a row. Remember back then we had a hell of a lot of volatility there on the higher time frame. It was very complicated. I had lots of uncertainty on those area, uh, trying to figure out if this was just a single flow waiting for a second one, or if the two flows have just happened very quickly. And remember, we've had back then all of the assumptions proving and backing those uncertainty claims because we've had volatility alerts on the higher time frame. Reason leading me to believe that I had to take the risk following the guidelines uh, uh, and waiting to see if there's a first flow. The first flow occurred once again, Context rising above the moving average, okay, though I decided to say, okay, we're gonna go right for it. Wait for the third range boundary happening here and buy either the moving average or the Bollinger Band. Due to the price compression, I was clear enough to say, I'm going to buy the Bollinger Band, not the moving average this time around, and I triggered it as well. But in here, I remember telling you that I was buying in here, also had another third trade out of there, and now is the time I start looking on some profits for the reason that we'll explain today, okay? Remember that normally you take your profits on the third range boundary. So you need to wait now for the price to break the trend channel somewhere around that price in here. Okay, let, let it time for it to break. You need for this to be broken and then you're gonna take your profits on the rebounds following right after, okay? That's the strategy. So you would say, well, Phil, then why the heck are you, list, uh, are you taking some profits here? Though so I'll explain everything so that full transparency is in here for the track record. There are multiple reasons. Uh, the first one is the most obvious one is that I will have expiration of my contracts by the end of that week anyway. Some of my contracts have been open on the June's expirations, which will end up this Friday, which means on Friday, my contracts will be forcedly closed, whether I like it or not. Of course, I could roll over the contract by opening on the next expiration immediately, 
which would make no chance. But the thing is that that was also reasons leading me to believe that we're going to stop there. Why is that? Remember, if you want to ever trigger early profit taking on a flow trade, meaning breaking the rule of don't do anything until we reverse the third range boundary, okay? That's really the way it is. You can look at the high time frame, okay? If and only if you are trading with closes above the context, okay? And if you see this, these breakouts, that means you're breaking cycles. You're destroying the bears, aka. That's what it means. If prices trade near those targets, okay, that you're starting to have momentum signals and stuff like that, and you're trading above the resistant context, okay, and that the flow has had its lifespan already. This is where you can sometimes trigger partial profit taking. And I say it very, very clearly, never you will be able to take it all off the table because you feel it's going to do this or that, okay? The reason why I take some profits off the table is the combination of all the previously said factors. This second flow, and I just copied, remember this line is the copy of this one, which means currently we're trading in a similar length in duration and amplitude as the first flow did back then. And remember, that's not a rule. The flows can have different variations and they can last as long as they want and they can amplify as long as they want as well. So we're just in an area that says, okay, we've replicated the first flow. So that means in terms of maturity, we have signs of advanced maturity. Does that mean the game is over and we can't go higher? Absolutely not. So don't ever make me say what I didn't. I just say we're mature enough to start thinking about potentially taking some profits off the table. The reason forcing me on top of it is that I have expiring contracts. So I will not buy. That's the reason why. Okay, I could just buy on the new expiration. I will not do it and I will wait for potential drop in prices to buy on the new expiration to compensate for the contracts that I've decided to take off the table. So that's the way it is. Okay, I take some profits due to the combination of factors trading above the rising uh, above the rising context. I have signs of breaking the bears. Uh, uh, and that's the reason why. Just like back then, I would, have, uh, I would have potentially been able to trigger some profits in this nearby area, right near the targets, above the rising moving uh, above the rising context. That would have been in a favorable context to start locking some gains. All right. So that's really the way it is. Okay. Make it very very simple for you guys. I am not limiting the S and P 500. I'm taking some gains off the table. And hear me well. I'm going to buy again if there is a market drawdown. How am I going to buy? That's the same old strategy. If I take some money off the table, I need to get ready to put that money back in at a discount, of course, hopefully. And if the market goes straight line up, well, of course, that's missed gain on the process. That means I've taken some profits to maximize my gains and therefore I'll end up having less money in the market if I fail. That's always the way, the way it is. There's never rewards without risk taking. So in here, I'm going to arbitrage and say, okay, due to the expiration and stuff, I will probably wait for a discount if I want to roll my contract to the next expiration. Due to the intrinsic maturity of this flow, which is for now reaching 100% amplitude replication of first flow, and it's uh, it has been quite somehow the same duration. So it is a maturity stage that could reverse the context. So I'm going to look for how it goes in terms of consolidation. Few things can happen. First way, I get the end of an H1 cycle, okay? Though I want to see letting some times for the bears to trade, okay? If the H1 cycle is terminated and we still trade below the 50% context, but above the context, okay? So in this area, okay, this area is gonna grind its way higher and this one as well. But if we trade there without reversing the context, terminating an H1 cycle, and if I get a uh, context detection, okay? So basically in here, the alert that I've set is this one, okay? I've been using Pro Framework any bullish context as a close and I create the alert. Okay, so that's the way it is. I do already have that alert running now. So the thing is that I'm going to pay attention to every potential bullish signal. And if they occur below 50% context, but above the rising context, I'll probably put some money back in. Otherwise, if this doesn't happen, I'm probably going to buy below the context. Remember, option number two is we reverse the context that would put an end to this flow and we're gonna to have to rebounce for a third range boundary where we'll take the money off the table. The remaining contracts will be pulled out. 
okay? So that's really the way it is. If I have follow through types of trades, I'll probably reinstigate the trades that I take and profit off, okay? Reinvesting the gains to follow the flow. Option number two, if the flow shows signs of maturity stage, late maturity stage, reversing the context, then I will take my profit on the third range boundary. All right, that's the way it goes. I don't know what the market is going to do. I don't try to, to assess that anyway. I know FOMC coming down the line today, ECB tomorrow. You know it's hell of a week. We've got the four witches on Friday. Hell of a complicated week to navigate. I do have signs of advanced maturity. I'm taking the money off the table because of the rollover on top of it. Okay, so of course, uh, uh, you guys make your own decisions. I gave you the rationals that can sometimes lead you to partial profit taking and i said it very clearly partial profit taking if for whatever reason you're rushing your way out of this market because you fear of whatever and that that, 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 that it's gone too far whatever the extreme greed sentiment i see hell a lot of arguments circulating around the social medias now once again don't ever fall for this this has never been part of the plan where do you see sentiment in here has it been mentioned somewhere no not at all Though news flows, sentiments, stuff like that are nothing you should pay attention to in flow trading. The only thing you pay attention to is these kinds of things. When you talk and when you start to break cycles, okay, and close multiple times above the rising context, okay, at some point, if you have bear signals in here, that's the sign for you to start taking eventually some profits. If you take some partial profits, partial, this is only to be reinvested as long as the market doesn't reverse the context. If the context is reversed, you don't buy again and you terminate your profit takings on the third range boundary. All right, that's all you need to know. It's a slightly higher risk taking, okay? So I would like to mention that very straightforward, all right? If you do these kinds of arbitrage, like starting to take some partial profit taking and rebuying uh, um, later, only do it if you're very, very experienced and familiar with the pattern itself, the core pattern, okay? Just like I teach you risk limitation uh, um, by adding uh, 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 breaks on top of other breaks, okay, that also need to be clearly understood on your end. If you try to do these kinds of buy, sell, arbitrage within a single flow trade, okay, I am assuming that you already master, absolutely master, the overall core structure. Okay, this is by far what brings a lot more money for a limited risk taken. So this is what you need to master first. But if you're very conveniently uh, uh, mastering this thing already and looking for potential more gains, that's one way to go. Okay, that's uh, going to be it for the S&P. Okay, uh, then cryptocurrencies, because that hasn't been an easy thing to navigate in here. The flow trading, remember, in here is on a high time frame, four hour. That's also explained the reason why there might be some divergences in those correlated assets. Okay, they are not correlated. Their flow trading happens on different time frames. That's also one of many reasons why crypto can still remain flat as S&P has gone up. Okay, remember, I've seen so many people assessing those correlations and stuff like that. Correlations are not part of your plan either. All right. So you do trade those two asset classes as two different flows on two different time frames. So don't ever, 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 ever bring to the table this stupid correlation stuff. Okay. Don't do it. Uh, just like I don't want you to, to bring on the table these uh, um, Fatah uh, uh, cabal and crypto cabal, which wants to destroy. Yes, it's true. We know that as a fact today. They're not even hiding. So the thing is that, yes, there is a crypto cabal that wants to destroy crypto. And yes, that's a reality. But does that mean you need to alter your trades or your ongoing strategies due to this? No, it's not. For that, you have a stop loss. And in here, full transparency, I have been stopped on Atom and stopped on Theta Network, which both I had speculative trades on. The thing is that, well, I also had stop losses and they have been triggered. And the thing is that, well, I could bargain all day long to say, yeah, this is because of the crypto cabal. I should have pushed my stop losses further away and stuff like that. No, never. I'd rather like to take a stop loss. Even the market being manipulated or not is not of my concern, okay? I'm not trying to hide. I've taken those losses. I'm moving to the next trade. 
period. The thing is that I still have ongoing trades on Ethereum and Chainlink. Bitcoin could very well be a good vehicle as well to buy, but I decided to go for Ethereum. Future will tell. But until then, those haven't been invalidated and there are no reasons for me to consider they will. I have a stop loss and if it's triggered, well, I'll take it as well, just like I did for Theta and Atom. The thing is that, as you've seen, it's nearly 100% success on the S&P 500 and it hasn't been such a high success rate on cryptos. But the thing is that if you then start to figure out the conclusion by saying, well, then I'll stop doing it for cryptos and I'll keep doing it for the S&P, that could be very well the moment in which it reverses, which means it stopped working just fucking fine on cryptos and you're making tremendous gains and on the opposite hand starts to go noisy and eventually even failing on the S&P. That's the reason, all right? You don't know and you have to play the game anytime you see it. As long as you've figured out a flow sequence, go trade it. It's the overall application of the strategy that does rewards over time. Okay, on a single asset, on a single occurrence, you never will know what's going to happen. You just got to play with a consistency of replicating the same set of rules over and over again. All right, just one very important caveat here. On the thing is that, well, on the S&P 500, if I were to zoom out for a second to just look at the broader picture, we would still be on the second flow sequence in here. It's still by far not terminated because we still don't have a third range boundary in place. Uh, and on the other hand, if it were uh, to reject, then we're still going to have to wait for the Bollinger Band, okay? We also know that there is a clear evidence stop loss in here, all right? That's the way to go. So why the heck have I been stopped on Theta and Atom? Because my stop losses were on the previous fucking bottoms, all right? And Adam has been triggered because my stop loss were in here. And it got triggered. And that, uh, that isn't a good sign. Definitely not a good sign. But that happens, all right? You can't just strike a 100% success rate. Those who seek the truth in markets are the worst traders ever. And we're truly talking about trading in here, okay? This has a totally different way of doing stuff when it comes to investment, when it's more likely based on time series, very carefully picking some assets instead of other, doing some research, value and stuff like that, okay? Trade what you know, all that things you probably are familiar with now, but don't ever mix the two, okay? When it comes to flow trading, this is risk management, this comes always with a stop loss, you have no fundamental analysis of any asset to make, you just trade what you fucking see, you know what the sequence is and you trade it as long as you think it's going to happen. That's really the way it is. As long as you have the back structure, the backbone of the structure supporting a potential flow trade, go for it. Okay, so was there a potential flow trading sequence on Adam? Fuck yes. Have I traded it? Eyes closed, yes. Did it work? No. That's really the way it is. Has it worked perfectly on the S&P 500 instead? Yes. Is my flow trading strategy net beneficiary on both cryptos and S&P 500s and the like? Absolute fucking yes. So don't ever, ever, ever go down this path of trying to strike the perfect trades. Some will work, others will don't, but there is not a chance this could be non-profitable. You've seen me trading those things for multiple months in a row now. I just can't figure out how some of you may think I've been losing money in that system. You have all the evidence lined up week after week of everything that I've done. And yes, two of these trades have been stopped. All the rest is net gain and there is still waiting and pending information to come for Ethereum and Chainlink. And God knows what the outcome of these two will be. They might eventually be stopped as well also. But the thing is, even if they did, I will still be far more profitable than in a loss in the overall net thing because it's been a 100% winning streak on the S&P 500. So that's really the way it is, okay? Just apply the goddamn rules. I think I have proven throughout the latest few months how profitable this thing is if you consistently apply it. But if you start to tweak the rules and say, yeah, no, I don't got to do it in the S&P because I don't know, there, there really, really seems a lot more like a crash is coming and I don't want to be buying a market that could be crashing. And instead, you will be going double down on the exposition on cryptos because, yeah, crypto is going to pump like crazy. Well, in the end, it end up being the opposite way around. But the thing is that if you traded everything, you're still going to be at a net profit. And all of those early psychological assumptions you might have to change the weights or trade some assets and not others because you feared or whatever, this is where the mistakes are made. 
All right. The reality is if you've traded it all, there's no way it can be profitable. All right. And that's the beauty of flow trading. You don't have to overthink things. You just have to do the due diligence job of finding the rig, the low risk strategy. And once you got that one, figure out the structure of the potential flow. And as long as the flow sequence isn't invalidated, go trade it. The only way to invalidate it is to break the higher highs and higher low structures. In here, as you've seen, if we broke the highs, it would have validated my sequence. We decided to broke the low, stop loss has been triggered, moving on to the next trade. All right, that being said, there's gonna be more than enough for today, guys. I wish you a pleasant weekend, pleasant FOMC. Remember tomorrow, the ECB, Friday 4th, which is expiration. So this is head of the week. I'm very curious to see what we'll have by the end of the week, and we'll discuss all of that for the longer time frames, as we do each and every week on Monday. See you guys later, bye-bye.